focus. IDA. Innovate. Enable. Welcome to another episode of NSC Finviz Season 2. Today we meet the young professionals of Jubilin Life Sciences at Noida. Jubilant Life Sciences is an integrated global pharmaceutical and life sciences company engaged in manufacture and supply of APIs, solid dosage formulations, radio pharmaceuticals, allergy therapy products and life science ingredients. It also provides services in contract manufacturing of sterile injectables and drug discovery and development. The company's strength lies in its unique range of pharmaceutical and life sciences products and services across the value chain. Jubilant Life Sciences has 10 world-class manufacturing facilities in India, US and Canada and is committed to deliver value to its customers spread across over 100 countries. Focusing on our theme for the series, NSE Finwiz visited Jubilant Life Sciences in Noida to gauge thoughts and notions of the young employees on investment and financial planning. Major of my investments are into public provident fund and I have made some investments into mutual funds as well. So, but major chunk of it that goes into public provident fund and fixed deposits. I would like to explore other products for the investment also. Like I'm, I'm young, so I have the opportunity. I can take more risk as if at this age. So we we'll like to invest in options where uh, I can have moderate risk and get more returns. So for me, uh, the primary asset of investment is equity. Uh, so I tend to look into what is happening into the market. You know, what are the main assets that I can look for investing? What are the key trends that are prevailing in the market, and how can they impact a particular stock? So yeah, I do invest mostly in stock market, and then in order to balance my risk, I also have some amount of investment in FD. The question I would uh, I would like to ask with the expert panel would be what would be the entry point and exit point. Uh, for any investment because normally uh, we do follow the sentiments of the market and the market news but we do, would like to understand the uh, core uh, logic behind this so that would be my question for the, from them warm welcome to all the employees at Jubilant Life Sciences we have two special guests today Mr. Subhash Lakotia who is a tax expert and Tanbir Alam who is the CEO and founder of FinCard Tanvir, if I can begin with you, you know, it was very, uh, it's very interesting to know that, you know, none of these working professionals have actually started investing. And they say that, you know, the first step to take to investing is with, whether it's fear or whether not understanding where to invest. So how, do, how does one begin that first step? There is a study which says the fear of loss of money stops people from investing. Okay. The loss is so deep-seated that you will be surprised to know that it gets processed in the same part of the brain that deals with death and mortality. Okay. And quite often, the perception of risk is little misunderstood. So when you're investing in a so-called safe product like fixed deposit and traditional insurance plan, you feel that it's safe. But imagine a product, FD, giving you 9% return, the post-tax return for a people who falls in 30% tax bracket is six percent okay and last 10 years the retail inflation has been average about eight percent so without you even realizing inflation like a termite has eaten into your return let me how let me tell you describe how our brain processes this now can you tell me which is which vehicle when you travel will you find most carrier traveling by an aeroplane or a car Car is? Car is more scarier than airplane. Okay. But globally what happened? People buy insurance when they board aircraft also, airlines. And most of the online ticket company prompt you buying insurance company and most people buy it also. But maximum death happened because of car accident. Suppose if I walked into this room with a handgun and some Mr. Lakotia walked into this room with a cigarette in hand, whom would you perceive to be more riskier? The guard would allow me? 
No, right? But maximum death happens because of smoking, not because of handgun. So quite often, your perception of risk, that risky investment, is misunderstood. The risk lies somewhere else. It's the silent demon called inflation, which you need to understand. So, Bash, how would you say that they have to take that first initial step into investment? Unfortunately, I will not agree with my friend on this point. And you may be surprised, why that? Because according to me, the first point which is required is not to invest, not to talk of risk or anything, but to save money which is available for investment. Right now, the young guys who are present here, they are counting every day, every hour, 25th December, Oh, for thereafter, New Year Eve, and thereafter, the real new, day, new Year. So I require money for all these things, and especially for my friends, show off something new for me, for my family, for my parents and everyone. So I personally feel that the first thing which is required is, number one, top of the list should be, I must save. And as I could see the profile of the participants present here, at least 50% uh, of them, they are not worried nor concerned right now as on today to save. Why? Number one point is, half of them I think they are single. Yes or no? No. Okay. Some of them they are single, <laughs> staying with their parents. No requirement of meeting out expenses for car or for house rent or for any other expense. Whole money with you. And for some of them, it may be the first job. So money coming up in six figures, till yesterday it was zero, zero. Because only I had to depend on the parents' pocket money, etc. That's all. And now so big money you are receiving every day. I would like to suggest you that when your expenses today are less, no big commitment, no family problem, then what you should do? Try to save as much as you can. Please save. And whatever saving you do, that will bring rewards for you in years to come. By the time you retire, if you plan well, especially stock market investments and mutual fund investments, then you will get minimum three to four times of your retirement benefits. What is the ideal ratio between expenses and saving? If I get an X amount of salary, what ideally I should save and I should keep for the expenses? Okay. There is no sure shot formula because as your salary level goes, you will realize that your saving proportion is growing. Okay, because you will have limited amount that you will use for your day to day household expenses. But for people who are just growing also, the thumb rule says you should have at least 50% being spent on the household expenses, including EMIs if you have to. Okay, maximum 20% should go into luxury expenses, which you typically be, that is the, that is the expense that bursts the budget. Okay, India traditionally has been a saving community. Till earlier, we have had 30% plus saving rate in the economy. That's what the saving to GDP ratio is. Yes, I partly agree to Mr. Lakotia that it is gradually going down because of the increased consumerism, but still we are anywhere above 25% level, so which is fairly good. So if your saving is above 25% and above, that's a decent saving that you're doing. Okay, so um, so Lakotia, if uh, they have to now start investing in equities, and I think that's what they would be interested. So how do they make that, again, the first step? The first step, let us presume we know big zero about equity. Only when you hear some of your friends, oh, I invested 100 and I got now 500 in two years. Then you say, Baba, I have not made anything. How do I go? And then you may land in the long, wrong area. I would recommend two things. Number one, if you want to go directly in the equity market, personally speaking, in next six months, you will get a lot of opportunities in India when the government will be seeing that the government companies dilute their capital. That is the best time. And if you don't know anything about uh, investing, which company or what, then also it is very good. But right now, we have no opportunity. We don't know which is the new issue, good or bad, amongst the existing issues, which are available companies, which shares do I buy, I don't know anything. Then the best step is invest through the mutual fund. And select three to five mutual funds, and not in just one, but in five mutual funds, you make the investment. That I feel should be your thinking now. And also take the root of SIP, systematic investment planning. Every month, maybe 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000, whatever budget you have got, please allocate it to the investment in mutual fund.
We need to take a short break here, but NSE Finvis Season 2 will be right back after this short break. Stay tuned. <laughs>